All right, so here is our next lesson talking about pollution and the impacts on human health. Um, and uh, this meme is from an old game called Oregon Trail, where a lot of times people die of dysentery. So let's talk about human health issues and how that's linked to pollution. We've touched on this topic at various points in all of our lessons. Uh, whenever we talked about particular pollutants, we talked about how they impacted human health. But it is in general kind of difficult to establish a direct cause and effect relationship between pollutants that people are exposed to and the impacts on their health because over the course of a lifetime, people are exposed to a variety of chemicals and a variety of pollutants and any one of those could either contribute to health problems or be the cause of health problems. So what we can say is we can say that okay these uh, pollutants or exposure to these pollutants are linked to these health problems but we may not be able to say a direct cause. Now pollutant exposure is uh, going to vary based on occupation and a number of factors but also by the location. So urban residents are going to be exposed to pollutants that are caused by industry or heavy vehicle traffic, things like photochemical smog, um, whereas people who live in more rural environments where there's a lot of agriculture may be exposed more to pesticides or fertilizers and have health impacts from that. So what we are going to look at now are some health conditions and how they're linked to particular pollutants. Like I said, some of this stuff may be a bit of a repeat from previous lessons, but we're kind of putting it all together in one lesson here. Um, the first three of these are things that are directly listed in College Board's uh, list of topics that we have to cover. The others are just kind of... Um, um, related to various pollutants that we've already talked about, but pay specific attention to things like dysentery. Dysentery is caused by either bacteria or parasites that are going to be in water that has been in um, uh, contaminated with untreated sewage. So dysentery basically comes from fecal contamination, and it can be caused either by a species of bacteria or by some amoebas, which are other parasites. There are still about 1.7 billion cases of dysentery every year, so it's an ongoing health problem. Some of the symptoms include uh, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, stomach cramps, fever. Um, a lot of times there's blood in either diarrhea or the mucus, which can be a cause of a particular um, anxiety because that can be a serious symptom and it can be fatal to people especially in young children or people over 50. Um, this is why it's important to have uh, good sanitation treating your sewage before it's released. Also why it's important to wash your hands after you go to the bathroom. Um, and then uh, you can detect some of this by measuring fecal coliform bacteria levels like we talked about in our sewage treatment notes. Mesothelioma is a particularly aggressive type of lung cancer, and it's associated mostly with uh, exposure to asbestos. So about 8 out of 10 cases of mesothelioma um, are in people who have been exposed to asbestos. So what you see here is you see asbestos fibers, which are small and can be carried in the air very easily, getting into the lungs of an individual while they breathe. They irritate and can cause mutations in the cells, and that can cause mesothelioma. Some of the symptoms are things like shortness of breath, chest pain, a persistent, persistent cough, and unfortunately a lot of the times by the time it's caught it's already pretty advanced and it is very hard to treat at that point. Ozone in the troposphere is also dangerous. Remember tropospheric ozone is harmful stratospheric ozone is beneficial, which we'll talk about in our next unit. Um, it can cause respiratory problems and damage lung function. This is particularly problematic in people who have asthma or COPD, which is a, um, a lung disease that's caused usually by smoking. It reduces your lung capacity, and so anything that damages your lung function is going to be made worse by exposure to ozone. So notice that um, with high ozone levels, that causes the pathways along which air travels to be narrowed, and that's going to cause breathing to be difficult. And you're also going to have other air pollutants that can cause some similar reactions in that they can cause respiratory problems and decrease your lung function. So exposure to other air pollutants like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides can also cause similar problems. 
carbon monoxide is um, particularly dangerous because remember we talked about the fact that it interferes with oxygen transport inside the body. So what happens is when you inhale carbon monoxide, it binds to your red blood cells to the molecules that normally carry oxygen, which may not be so bad, but it's an irreversible binding, meaning that until those red blood cells are recycled and replaced, uh, they're no longer able to functionally carry oxygen, which can be a problem that causes things like headache, dizziness, fatigue, blurry vision, shortness of breath, confusion, chest pain, nausea, and vomiting. And one of the big problems was if people experienced carbon monoxide poisoning in their sleep and they're experiencing some of these symptoms like blurry vision, shortness of breath, or confusion, it could be very difficult for them to get out of their house where they're being exposed to carbon monoxide. Fertilizer can also cause problems when you're exposed to large amounts. It can cause methemoglobinemia, um, which is blue baby syndrome. Uh, it can cause cancer and respiratory illness. Uh, blue baby syndrome causes things like nausea, vomiting, drowsiness, slurred speech, uh, slow reflexes, loss of consciousness, seizures, rapid breathing, increased heart rate and confusion, and it can be fatal. Pesticides, their effects differ depending on which particular pesticide you've been exposed to. So depending on which one you're exposed to and what concentration you're exposed to, you can have mild symptoms, things like minor skin irritation or something that seems like an allergic reaction, all the way to severe symptoms, things like headache, dizziness, or nausea. Um, organophosphates, a particular class of uh, pesticides, can also um, are particularly dangerous because they can cause severe symptoms, things like convulsions, which are um, convulsions are uncontrolled muscle movements. They would kind of look like a seizure. They can cause coma and they can also cause death. Heavy metal contamination, we've talked about multiple times. Uh, things like mercury, lead, arsenic, those are dangerous to come in contact with. They can cause neurological damage, and especially if people are exposed during pregnancy, they can cause developmental problems. We talked before about how mercury and even lead can cause a decrease in the IQ of babies born when their mothers are exposed to those chemicals. If you have acute or very large-scale contact with these chemicals um, at one time, you can have all of these symptoms, abnormal heartbeat, which is arrhythmia, anemia, brain damage, memory loss, difficulty breathing, you can damage your kidneys, your livers. If you're pregnant, it can lead to miscarriage and cancer. So hopefully you do not get exposed to these chemicals in large amounts, so that way you do not end up like the Bitmoji here.